welcome back. In this video, we're going to kind of go over the blob brush alternative for Affinity Designer. So if any of you have checked out any tutorials online that are geared towards Illustrator, a lot of them will mention the blob brush, especially if you're interested in like surface pattern design or illustration. I myself use it quite a bit when I am working in Illustrator. And if you've never worked in Illustrator, I'm going to go through like a quick overview of what the blob brush is. So you'll know exactly why you may want to use an alternative in Affinity Designer. So I'm already in Illustrator and I'm just going to select the blob brush. As you can see, you just draw with it. But the benefit of it is if you select it, you will notice all of the lines have merged into one shape. And unlike Affinity Designer, when you're using the brush, it's not actually putting in kind of like a line and using points. It is actually like a full shape. So it's actually a lot easier on your system and it's not so complicated and it's not going to slow things down. So the blob brush is really beneficial when it comes to things like you've scanned in a drawing and you want to kind of like draw over it and vectorize it. I use it a lot just making motifs on my own without even having any scanned artwork in. And you can also use it with just your mouse. You can use a Wacom tablet. You can even use a program called AstroPad if you want to draw on your iPad directly to your computer. And it's definitely my most used tool in Illustrator. So there is no tool in Affinity Designer that replaces the blob brush from Illustrator, but there is a workaround. It takes a little bit longer, but it'll work just the same. So you just use your brush tool. And so starting out, you'll see it does the same thing when you're looking at it as the blob brush. When you select it, this is where you can see the difference. You see the line and it puts in all the points for this specific line and essentially just puts a stroke on it and you can change how large this is. You can make it look as if you have used pressure. If I go to put another line over the top, you will see that it has not merged into one shape like in Illustrator. I'm just going to delete these and show you how to kind of work around it. You can do this in different steps or you can do it all at once at the end. So with the pen tool, I'm going to adjust the width to something a little bit larger. And you can just go ahead and draw. You can use your right and left brackets to increase or decrease the size of your brush. And you'll notice, see how it gets a little like jaggedy. If you do not want that, which I don't think most people would, at the top you will see the stabilizer. Click that and it helps out a lot with that. Keeps it a little more smooth. So there is the start of a flower. Like I said, if you go in, you will notice every single one of these are individual lines with a bunch of points. And I can already hear my computer system struggling slightly with it because it is very heavy on the system. In order to kind of replicate the blob brush, all you need to do is go up to layer and then expand stroke. So now it has expanded these into individual shapes as opposed to like the lines. To merge them all together, all you have to do is go up to the top and click the add button. And now it has moved into one shape. A Couple of other notes about using your pen tool. Like I said, I highly recommend using the stabilizer but another thing that you can do, go to the controller and use the pressure option. 
And this is really great if you have like a Wacom tablet or if you want to use something like AstroPad to use your, like if you have the iPad Pro, you can use the Apple Pencil and you can get that pressure sensitivity to it. So normally, like I said, I use my mouse. It's just something I'm more comfortable with. Uh, the Wacom tablet definitely takes some time to get used to, but if it's something that you really, really like, because it kind of feels like you're drawing on paper a little bit, then by all means, definitely use it. I'm just gonna switch over to my Wacom tablet so I can show you the pressure sensitivity. So I'm just going to do a line. I'm gonna start off with very gentle strokes and then adding more pressure as I go along. And you can see how that line has started off quite small and has gotten larger. And it's all because of that pressure sensitivity. So if you scan in your document, if you've been drawing and you wanna sketch it, then using something like the Wacom tablet with the pressure sensitivity, it definitely adds more of that hand-drawn look when you're in Affinity Designer. So all you really need to do, so it is a smaller document and easier on your computer system and kind of mimic that blob brush effect is to use your pen tool, draw with your mouse or Wacom tablet or some other alternative, go up to layer, expand stroke, and then grab all of them and use the add tool. And that is the best workaround for the blob brush tool in Affinity Designer. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks guys.